Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. I am thrilled uh, to be the one to welcome you all to this momentous occasion. I want to extend a very warm welcome to our uh, seventh headmaster, Mr. Craig Larimer, class of 1969. We also have Dr. Daryl Thatcher, class of 1955, here with us. And our uh, student, uh, our class body presidents and uh, community council leaders here in the front row uh, who are all here to celebrate this momentous occasion. You know, uh, truly this day is a, is, is a testament to our unwavering commitment uh, to our students by whom we are inspired each and every day uh, and for whom we work tirelessly to provide transformational experiences on this stunning 1,100 acre campus and beyond. I want to say a quick and important hello to members of the Fountain Valley community who are watching uh, from afar. We're live streaming this, and in particular, there are a few of whom uh, that could not be here today, that this event would not be possible. And that's uh, a warm uh, thank you to Pleasant and Jerry Frouchy, Uda and John Gannett, Mary Lou and Bill Mullen, Dee and Laddie Merck, and uh, Chris and uh, Jim Scott. A warm hello to all of you from the prairie. We are on the cusp of an exciting new chapter, and it's a, a new chapter of which all of you play such an important part. Uh, we are all the beneficiaries of the dedication and generosity of those who have come before us. Alumni, faculty, parents, and friends of the school, it's important we don't ever lose sight of this and remind ourselves that we each carry a responsibility. We carry a responsibility to pay this forward down the line and give back to this school that has given and continues to give so much to every one of us. For the last five years, we have been hard at work devising and implementing robust strategic and campus master plans that continue to strengthen our support of student, faculty, and staff success and deliver our mission here in the heart of the Rocky Mountain West. You can't miss the construction equipment moving around campus, uh, especially if you live over in uh, Big uh, Figgy and uh, Ballantyne and Sinclair dorms or at Howe Residence, where at 6 a.m. sharp, we are awoken every morning by the wonderful beep, 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 beep of heavy equipment moving around. It's quite the alarm clock. I know uh, all of all of you residents enjoy that. Lloyd and I had a great conversation about it the other day. We were, we were both a little uh, uh, weary from the lack of sleep. Um, but obviously we're in the throes of implementing uh, phase one of our campus master plan to enhance uh, the Fountain Valley School experience for students and adults. And it's guided by our mission at every step. And I think that's a, something that's very important. This is not a, a what we'll call a, a facilities arms race. This is not building bigger, better than everyone else. This is about delivering the mission uh, to our students. It's about supporting our faculty in their great work. It's about providing these transformative experiences. To be able to uh, leave class and walk down to a, a new facility and conduct rock climbing practice uh, and then finish that and shower and go up to the gym rather than having to fight traffic into and out of Colorado Springs and a yellow school bus and everything that that represents. There, there, there's a lot of pieces of this puzzle that are all about supporting our faculty and supporting our students. Uh, and to enhance the living and learning environment, uh, the Fountain Valley School leadership identified short and long-term goals for the campus in the form of a comprehensive master plan. Through that planning process, the following themes prevailed, and they guide and inform all of what we're doing here, and that is number one, to create opportunities for learning and growth both within and beyond the academic day. To embrace the power of the prairie, the peaks, and the place that has a visceral hold upon all who have learned, lived, and worked at this school and to build facilities that align with and support the school's mission and program in academics, the arts, athletics, and the outdoors, perpetuating our founder, Elizabeth Sage Hare, visions, her vision and promise. Exciting elements of this phase one that you are all seeing and experiencing include uh, campus infrastructure focused on circulation, pedestrian pathways in the southwest campus entrance, 
reconfiguration of our campus core that's going to remove all the vehicular traffic. It's going to provide a community-focused and pedestrian-friendly environment. The construction of a new maintenance facility supporting the selfless women and men who take such good care of this place and of all of us, night and day, rain or shine. The addition of three new faculty homes as well as a duplex. And what we're here to do today, which is break ground for the future 60,000 square foot athletic center. Beyond fitness alone, this athletic center is one that matches the school's commitment to developing a culture of healthy living in a defined yet flexible manner. It will act as a community gathering space where students, faculty, and staff alike will pursue wellness and personal excellence. And it will include a regulation uh, game, uh, basketball and volleyball court with bleacher seating, uh, practice uh, basketball and volleyball court, a climbing facility, an eight lane pool, a suspended running track, fitness space, locker rooms, classrooms, and event spaces, and office space. And it's a facility that aligns and strengthens the school's mission and program in academics, arts, athletics, and the outdoors, and will serve the needs of our students and our faculty here in the, in the near future, but in the many years to come. You know, several years ago, uh, Fountain Valley School planted the seeds for this athletic center, spending countless hours brainstorming, designing, and raising $2.7 million towards the effort. And in particular, it was through the hard work and efforts of Craig Larimer, of Mike Collins, class of 56, Vince Colarelli, and Wayne Tamura, the groundwork was laid for this day today to occur. And I want to say thank you to Craig, to Mike, to Vince, and to Wayne. Before we move to the ceremonial breaking of the ground, uh, I've asked Dr. Daryl Thatcher, class of 1955, a parent of three Fountain Valley School graduates and a grandparent of a Fountain Valley School graduate and an accomplished historian to share some thoughts with us today. So Daryl, would you please come on up and uh, uh, enlighten us a little bit. <laughs> generous, loving support of a school that so many admire. This is a great day for Fountain Valley School. When Mr. Webb called me, I was honored as someone without a great athletic record when I was in Fountain Valley <laughs> to be asked to give a few comments about the athletic program, which although I was not a great athlete, has made a real difference in all these years since I was a student. So it's a real pleasure to get to share some of those things with you. When he called, Mr. Webb said that one reason he was calling me was because of the many hats I'd worn. Student, class agent, trustee, parent, grandparent, uncle of Fountain Valley students. That idea of hats appealed to me. But Mr. Webb may not get the hats he thought of. <laughs> this is probably the oldest Fountain Valley hat I have. <laughs> Certainly not as old as I am. Uh, it does not date back all the way to 1952 when I came to the school. But it does serve to uh, mark some of those memories. In 1952, when I came to Fountain Valley, we had a brand new gym. <laughs> You're sitting in it. <laughs> it served very, very well. It was a landmark for us at the time. Prior to that, Athletics had been on the second floor of what you know as the art barn. That was a solid floor. One end was a basketball court. The other end was a stage where we did Gilbert and Sullivan operettas. 
and other productions of that nature. So this was a facility that was all for athletics. Architecturally, it was beautiful and still is. The arching wooden beams were, I believe, an architectural <coughs> landmark of that time. And we had all the new things we needed, like lockers in a locker room. And, you know, a basketball court that was for nothing else. We also had a swimming pool, not in the gym. There was a cement lined pit down across the entrance road from where the Holly Library stands today. And the only athletic activity I remember there was the uh, race to get out quickest because it was a really cold dip when you went in. There was uh, something that I do remember from then that I think has come all the way down through Fountain Valley history, and that's a history of new, innovative sports and sports activities. When we came to this new gym, we had squash courts. Nobody else in Colorado Springs, with the possible exception of the Air Force Academy, had squash courts. We played squash. Mr. Henry Poor, the headmaster, was the coach. There being no one else in town with squash courts, we played among ourselves. There was no real competition. <laughs> but it was a unique sport. It served me well when I went east to college. Part of that was something called conditioning, fitness. Again, not so common in those days. Mr. Poor required that before we practiced, we go out with him and run around all four athletic fields. Pretty good job. And after you've done that for a while, you realized you probably were in better shape than you had been before. And another innovative sport of my student days will shock you a little because it's soccer. Nobody was playing soccer in those days. We did have competition there. We played Colorado College. Those were challenging games. <laughs> we also played a team from Fort Carson. Now, they had one fellow on that team that was reputed to be an All-American from UCLA. Those were wonderful matches because that team made sure that they were teaching experiences for us and that we had fun. And I'd emphasize that word fun. We had fun in this place in those times. I did graduate from Fountain Valley, went on to college, medical school, met Terry, my wife. Uh, we were married. Uh, I spent a couple of years in the U.S. Navy, came back to Colorado Springs, time for a new hat. Because I was honored to be elected an alumni trustee. A lot was happening in Fountain Valley athletics in those days. An indoor real swimming pool in which aquatic meets could be held. Uh, thanks largely to the El Pomar Foundation, as I understand it. Uh, somewhere in those years, the Athletic Hall of Fame was founded. And I think that's been important in athletic history here. And then there was a really big event. I was honored to be on the board of trustees that cast the vote to include girls at Fountain Valley. <laughs> Just think of the changes that was made in Fountain Valley Athletics. Just look at the banners. Just do anything to do with athletics here. Certainly, my vote was the biggest contribution I ever made to the athletic program at Fountain Valley School, and I am very proud of that. Those years still 
emphasized the fun of athletics at Fountain Valley. Some of you will recognize this. If you read the alumni review when Craig Larimer was headmaster, he wrote a column for each issue. And the column was topped by a photograph of Craig wearing his hat, like this hat. He didn't get it for being headmaster. He got it for being a class agent, which is where I got uh, mine. Stephanie Carter, uh, alumna, parent, I believe, uh, and co-owner of the Wallaroo Hat Company, gave all of the class agents this duster model one year. But a hat of this shape and style cannot help but remind one of a program Fountain Valley Athletics offers that not many schools have, and that, of course, is the equestrian program. A program also known well beyond Fountain Valley's borders. This hat, personally, has to remind me of a fellow student, Wayne McVeigh, a couple of years older than I, who was certainly one of the very best horsemen I ever knew. Wayne was a great human being, too. And he illustrated another thing about Fountain Valley sports. He illustrated the breadth of involvement. In spite of his superb horsemanship skills and his deep involvement uh, in the riding program, Wayne McVeigh played hockey. A breadth of experience that not all school athletes enjoy. Certainly a hat like this reminds me of the fun that we had in the equestrian program. My most recent hat has to testify to the growth in sports here. Again, look at all of the banners, all of the trophies out front, all of the accomplishments here that Fountain Valley athletes have made. And all of those things do lead right into the doors of the new athletic center that will soon stand just a bit to our east. Let me name just a few sports that really weren't here for me, that will be here. Aquatics, climbing, lacrosse, mountain biking, yoga, fitness and conditioning. And I've missed a lot. And of course, there are a lot of other sports that uh, are part of the Fountain Valley program. Some of you might say, well, now wait, wait, you talked about physical fitness, conditioning. That's not a sport. I am a retired physician. Let me name four significant diseases. Heart disease, stroke, diabetes, depression. There can be a whole long list. All of these have been shown by very good modern studies to be benefited by treatment with exercise and conditioning. I could name those same four and the longer list and tell you that other equally modern and valid studies show that exercise and conditioning plays a major role in the prevention of those diseases. It's like exercise being a universal medicine and to some degree a vaccine. And it doesn't have the side effects of many, unless you fall off your exercise bike. <laughs> so you're right. Maybe exercise and conditioning are not a sport, but they certainly represent a lifestyle, an important life-saving lifestyle. And when you walk through the doors, of the new athletic center, you will have all the things there that are needed to teach and sustain that kind of a lifestyle. And Mr. Webb has mentioned many of the internal features like the running track and so forth that will be there. 
So now, I'd like to ask Sky McCurdy to come up. This is certainly the appropriate hat for today and the future of the athletic program at Fountain Valley. And it's high time for me to pass the hat <laughs> to you who represent all of those who are going to bring this facility to its full potential. This is a great day for Fountain Valley School. My hats are all off to all of you who've made it possible. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl, for those wonderful words. Last spring, the Board of Trustees voted to move forward with construction of phase one of the master plan as we continue the work to complete the campaign with the confidence that our alumni, parents, and friends of the school will take us to and over our $25 million goal. As of today, we have raised $21.5 million. All of you here for your patience and persistence and our generous donors uh, who have supported the campaign to date without whom our dreams would not be the reality they are becoming with each passing day around this campus. I want to say thank you to our partners and their teams at Icon Construction and at CSNA Architects in particular. Greg Collier and Don Johnson, Gregory Friesen and Ken Thomas. Thanks to all of you, our campus transformation is underway, albeit with early morning wake-up calls. Uh, and boy, what a difference uh, that has made already. Good work to all of you and your team. Let's keep it up, and while you're at it, please keep it under budget and ahead of schedule. We'd appreciate that. <laughs> stand up here and lead this charge into the next chapter. I am fortunate to be standing on the shoulders of the seven headmasters who came before me, and in particular, I want to say thank you to Fountain Valley School's seventh headmaster, Craig Larimer, to whom I share my gratitude for the time and effort put forth to help move this dream to a reality. Craig, there are few individuals who have given more to Fountain Valley School than you whether it be as a student, as a board member, as a board chair, as a director of admission, as a head of school, and a proud parent of four Fountain Valley School graduates. And as we all know, behind every leader is a rock of support, a voice of important reason, and a partner in crime. And a large and heartfelt thank you to your wife, Irene, for her tireless support of this wonderful institution and its students. Now, I'm going to ask uh, Daryl and Craig, uh, Duke the Dane, and our student leaders to stand up here, grab a shovel, and we're going to do a little ceremonial breaking of the ground, and then I'll return for a few closing remarks. But let's, uh, let's break the ceremonial ground here up front. Thank you. 
Thank you, Duke. Thank you, students. Uh, thank you, Daryl, and thank you, Craig. A few quick housekeeping details. Uh, lunch is ready and is being served up in the dining room. Uh, if you have a moment, uh, I'd invite you to check out some of the renderings and visuals up here. Uh, also, remind you to keep an eye on your inbox and check the website regularly for updates on this uh, exciting project. We'll uh, continue to post pictures uh, of the construction, and I'm excited that a live feed from our new webcam uh, is already uh, underway uh, and taking care of business, so you'll be able to see the progress as it continues of the Athletic Center. This is uh, such an exciting time for Fountain Valley School, and a new chapter in its history. And I just want to thank each of you for being an important part of this momentous occasion. Thanks to our generous donors and to our talented faculty, our future is bright, and we are poised for 88 more years of transformative education right here in the heart of the Rocky Mountain West, something that no other school in this country can offer. Take care, be well, and thank you all for making this such a wonderful and great day in the history of our school.